right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting of the Public Safety Committee to order. Uh, let the record reflect. I will let each member uh, identify themselves, starting with Alderman Rote. Here. Can you just state Alderman Rote's here? What's that? Your name. Your name. Oh, Dan Rote, 4th District. I'm right. sorry. Ray Turner, 1st District. Suzette Grisham, Chair. Kevin Haas, 5th District. Okay. Um, item C, we need a motion for approval of minutes from the June 25th, 2024 public safety meeting. I move approval. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I am so sorry. Let the record reflect that Alderman uh, Halverson is here via Zoom. So good evening, Alderman Halverson. I'm so sorry. So we have all of our committee members here. Forgive me. Okay, we have um, item number two, 2024 which is a discussion regarding discipline strategies for retail alcohol licenses who violate the, the laws applicable to their licenses. Uh, I'm gonna start this out with letting all you know in the audience that uh, Take note, we're gonna have two hearings tonight, but there were eight others that were requested to come to this meeting this evening. Not under a summons and complaint, but because we have some concerns. Of those uh, that we requested to be here, there's only three of the eight here. Some gave viable reasons to not attend, some just didn't call back. That's very discerning for us as a committee. Madam Chair, I believe there's four out of the eight. There's four of the eight? Yes. Okay, my apologies, yep. thank you. Uh, Nick. So I just want to take note that anybody who's going to view this, anybody in the bar industry right now, I know you all talk amongst yourselves, it's very important that we um, talk about things that are concerning us as a committee. So if you are invited to council, I would appreciate and we would appreciate that you take the time to do so because the last thing we want to see is you here a second time. So um, getting to business, each month we receive information, usually from the uh, West Dallas PD. And there's compliance checks that take place at randomly chosen establishments. And again, they're conducted by the West Dallas PD. The PD notifies the council of trends and or violations. So each month we get a report. Of the last two months, eight of 10 compliance checks failed in the city. And that was in April. In June, 10 of 10 failed which means all those that were requested to appear here this evening allegedly served alcohol to minors. At this time, the council has serious concerns that there is a trend happening here, and it's pertaining to those who carry liquor licenses and just following the law and our ordinances. As a courtesy, we're not going to name each establishment who, who allegedly violated these state statutes, however, this is a firm warning and a reminder to all of you that these alleged violations, if they continue, your, li your liquor license may be in jeopardy. So there's no question that we want your business to succeed. And this issue, in my opinion, and I, I'm going to speak for the rest of the, the committee on this, is that it's, it's an easy fix. Check IDs. Bottom line. And there's no, uh, there's no excuse for not checking IDs nor are we going to accept uh, shifting the blame to the bartenders because bottom line, the buck stops with you and how you operate your business. So my suggestion is that you review your business policies uh, to eliminate the problem. Uh, we don't want to see you here before us again, period. So I'm going to wish you all well. I thank you those, for those who came and for those that are listening in. Um, I'm going to offer the floor to the kid committee members who may want to add anything to this. And after you speak, I'm going to pass it back to our uh, prosecuting attorney, Nick Serwin. Does anybody wish to speak? No, you said it, Madam Chair. I do not. Okay. No. All right. It's back to you, Nick. Thank you. And if I may, Madam Chair, and feel free to interrupt at any point in time, but. Um, 
I've spoken with a few of you today already, either here or on the phone. My job as the prosecutor is when the police department brings information to me, um, I aggregate information and present it to the committee in a um, summons complaint fashion. The goal from my perspective as a prosecutor across the board is to change behaviors, right? Whether it's gonna be through enforcement or through working together. And so I think right now we have two complaints set for today, which we'll address momentarily, but the remainder is, is this is a golden opportunity to get a heads up of, hey, we know that the police department does these checks. Um, they're gonna continue to happen. Clearly they're pretty successful at this point um, from a negative standpoint. And so we gotta be on, on alert. Um, and so that's what I wanna impart, right? Is that, hey, we have some big, great, fantastic businesses that got swept up in this one. Let's have this, these businesses be the example of how to do it better going forward as opposed to having this trend continue. Um, one thing I wanna point out is that when there's these undercover operations, the way the law works is you get two, okay, before we can do anything. So right now, you're, a lot of bars, 18 in the last two months, are on their one strike. You only get two strikes before you're coming in here on a, an enforcement action. I'm sure the bars that are in here right now on the enforcement action wish they had a meeting or a chance to have this meeting before and, and revamp things. And so this is the, this is the chance, right, um, for those other bars. Um, we did, and if you wanna see an example of how these go down, we did just have a hearing for a different bar and so you can find that on YouTube um, on the city's website and see exactly how that hearing process works and what those penalties are. For what it's worth, what the law says is there has to be a penalty somewhere between 10 and 90 days. Um, the outcome of that one you can find on, on again, YouTube. Um, but I just wanna, I'm pointing this out as an, again, hopefully a benefit. This isn't a hearing today, there's no evidence being presented, there's nothing along these lines that, nobody's in trouble today um, of those, this first group. And so use it as a, a catalyst to talk with your employees to say, hey, not only is your job in jeopardy, but the bar could have some problems um, if you don't just ask for ID, right? So that's all I wanted to say. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk briefly and I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Attorney Sirwin. Um, for those that were asked to be here, if you'd like to stay, you're welcome to. Otherwise, uh, you don't have to stay, just to let you know. Um, moving along, we're going to go to item 3, 2024-0537, summons and complaint against Ekbar, LLC, doing business as Ekbar, 7408 West Walker Street, agent Melanie Kukas. Come up, Melanie, thank you. Did I pronounce the last name correctly? Yes. Thank you. Just push that little button there. There you go. Oh, tap it again. Just push it hard. There you go. Okay, uh, Ms. Kukas, the purpose of you coming this evening is to either admit or deny the allegations against your establishment and you as an agent. Mm -hmm. And at this time, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to admit or deny the charges. If I can just speak very briefly, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. So what the state law says is every licensee gets the opportunity to admit or deny the allegations in the complaint. An admission would eventually or essentially go to, you're saying the items in the complaint are accurate, you can still have a chance to speak, this goes for everybody or anybody, you can still have a chance to speak to what those violations are, what your opinion is of them or what remedies you've done in the, um, since that point, but you're not asking the city at that point to present evidence to uphold those, okay? Mm -hmm. If you deny, then we would set another date for a hearing, um, police would come um, that were involved in whatever was happening and would testify and then there would be potentially deliberations. Either way, the end of it, well, either way there's gonna be deliberations and there's gonna be some finding by the committee, depending on whether there's evidence or an admission, if that makes sense, yep. okay? Um, and so for today's purposes, generally speaking, that's the only thing that happens. We're not asking for any additional information, um, but it's completely up to the committee on what the process looks like after whatever answer you have at this point, okay? Do you have any questions? Nope. Does the board have any, or uh, committee have any questions? I okay. do not, do. Okay. And I'm only acting as the prosecutor for this instance, and so if there is an admission, for example, um, and you wanted to proceed today, you could do so, but without representation from me, if okay. that makes sense. And uh, just to clarify that, we do have the, on the agenda this evening that we can go into closed session. So I would ask my colleagues to speak up if 
we uh, would like to kind of clarify this and just take care of it tonight, we have that opportunity to do so. Okay? All right. Back to you, Ms. Cookus. Unfortunately and disappointingly, I have to admit that it was, I've, uh, two of my bartenders in the last year have um, served alcohol to uh, two underage secret ops, um, uh, underage minors. And we have, um, one was last, I believe it was like fall of last year and the other one was just like a month or two ago. I think it was maybe two months ago, like May. Um, I don't have my paperwork in front of me. Um, we have, I have stressed multiple times. I've been a bartender in West Dallas for the last 20 years and I've not had any violations on mine. So it's really important to me and obviously to my establishment to make sure that my employees are not serving underage minors. Um, so my answer to your question is yes, I am not denying it and I have to accept what was done. Okay. Madam Chair, could I clarify one point then? Yes, please. So you had identified that there was two underage sales and you're admitting those portions. The complaint has what I will identify as six counts, a few of those being noise complaints. December 8th noise complaint, March 2nd noise complaint. Um, March 31st noise complaint and then May 31st noise complaint. Um, are those also part of your admission or are those ones that you'd rather set for a hearing? Um, well, it, can I grab my paper? Yeah, if that's okay, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so the, on the days that those were the noise complaints were in. We're in a neighborhood, unlike a lot of other bars. So unfortunately, we're tucked in a neighborhood and what the level of noise complaint is, I feel varies based on the complaint. Um, I'm not sure if they were four separate callers or if they were one person in the neighborhood that has something against the bar because they're without throwing any other bars under the bus. Um, the neighborhood is busier than it used to be um, because my bar is busier. Um, so I'm not sure if it's just one person or four, but regardless, all four of the times have been on a karaoke night. Um, and it's not, it's, all of them were Thursdays. Um, one of them was a Sunday, and that Sunday was for a 50th birthday party that we did have karaoke there. Um, my neighbors in the neighborhood, I work with them all, I talk to them all. Um, if I have to have um, witnesses or people in the neighborhood, they're more than willing to come in and say that I have it under control. Um, we don't have fights, we don't have um, police calls for riotous behavior, behavior, and that's the when I'm accepting or denying that the words that the charge that was in here or the complaint in here said riotous behavior. It was, it's not that, it's not even loud music more than anything. It's the base that's been provided by the um, karaoke guy. We have taken um, steps to ensure that the base is not loud. Um, we have a decibel reader that we walk outside. We adhere to that we have until 10 o'clock to be able to play music, you know, to a level that is in the, based on our entertainment permit. I've done the steps to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, unfortunately, when you're bartending and unfortunately on these days, um, you don't realize because when you have karaoke and you have a bunch of people and the music is, the bass is louder, you're not really, you're not really hearing that, which is a poor excuse because everything is loud. But when it has come to our attention, um, I've immediately turned it down. It hasn't happened, you know, more than what has been listed in here. Um, so is there, was there an issue? Has there been an issue? Yes, four times out of the three years that I've been open. Um, all of them have been addressed and we've done the steps, but to label it as riotous behavior, I'm not agreeing to that amount. Um, I will agree to the incidents have happened, but I'm, riotous behavior is a far fetch from what it is. Attorney Sirwin, would you mind going into uh, an answer on that as far as our ordinance and Absolutely. how it's written? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, the state statute regulates this whole process, and so that's the exact language in the statute. Indecent uh, or disorderly or riotous, indecent or improper house, 
is just kind of the catch-all term for some other type of violation that might be like disorderly. So that could include fights, that could include loud, mu loud music. Uh, nobody's alleging that you were riotous, for okay. what it's worth. It's just the music was <laughs> so loud. So I'm like, wait a second. That, the music was loud, and that's how the statute categorizes that broad type of violation. So Not that it's a riot, but it could be any of those four things. Disorderly, riotous, indecent, or improper. And who determines what it, so we have, say we have a, someone in the neighborhood, which has been known to make complaints. Mm -hmm. And they come, they, they are like, you know what, Akbar, we don't want them in our neighborhood, even though it's been a bar for years. If they continue to call and they continue to call and they continue to call, am I the nuisance or are they the nuisance at that point? And do you know what I'm saying? Like what, Absolutely. who determines that? There's one time in here that the, um, it states in here that the police officer came and said that he did notice he could hear the music from across the street and that was on the day that it was the birthday party and it was at 7.30 at night. All the other times it doesn't state in here that they'd heard it. Melanie, um, if I may uh, interject, uh, yeah. I think collectively as a committee, when things like this are brought to us, mm -hmm. uh, we can identify such things through the hearing mm -hmm. um, as you're explaining. Because right. um, those are the questions we would have. I think at this juncture, if we want to solve this issue tonight without mm -hmm. having to go to hearing or not, uh, yeah. or even have another meeting with us, um, I think we just need to kind of condense that. Okay. Uh, and so if you, deny, if you deny those, I believe then, Attorney Serwin, we would have to go to uh, summons and or a hearing? Correct, yes. Any and are they two separate? So like the licensing for, or the underage serving the alcohol and the noise complaints, I know it's all in one thing on here, but can I say, I agree to that, and this I'd rather challenge, or is it I have to either agree or disagree to the whole entire thing? Madam Chair, could I answer that? Please do. From my perspective, they are two violations or two statutory, different statutory violations. One is the underage sales, one is the disorderly riotous, indecent, or whatever the other one was. Mm -hmm. um, they can't, you could admit to one part and not admit to the others, correct? Okay. If you think something of those is accurate, if you say counts, just an example, mm -hmm. one, okay. two, five, and six, I admit to, I don't admit to whatever the other ones were, you can do that as well and just have chunks that you would agree that occurred if you were there and remember turning the volume down or something like that. So you can take, you can pick and choose at this point. Mm -hmm. The committee then can decide at that point if there are some noise violations that you agree to, they can say, okay, we're not gonna consider those ones that you've denied at this point mm -hmm. and we don't, we're not gonna set those for a hearing because we're gonna resolve one, three, and five, and six today or whatever it's gonna be. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, that makes okay. sense. Does that make sense for the committee? Yes, yes. And and Melanie, the, uh, Attorney Sirwin hit the nail on the head. Um, okay. There's things that if you spoke to this evening, mm -hmm. uh, we obviously understand. Yeah, so. perfect. So I will agree to obviously the, um, the underage, because that's inevitable, but I'd like to talk further about the noise complaints. Okay, and if it is okay with the committee to proceed forward, I think we could wrap this up this evening. Is there any objection to that? No, no objection. Okay, all right. So, thank you. For the record then, so you're not admitting to any of the noise complaints, right? Do you wanna look at them? <coughs> I just wanna make sure I'm clear what the committee has available to discuss. Count two I would was I would like to discuss all of them um, because I want to know what our what again what the what is considered a noise complaint. Okay. Um, and so I would like more information and more to discuss those further. Okay. So the noise ones would are denial. Yes. Okay. So Attorney Serwin, then we'd have to have a separate action on that at another time. It would be up to, the, from my perspective as the prosecutor, it would be up to the committee if you wanna just act alone on the underage sales and disregard for the time being the, um, the noise complaints or just dismiss those altogether at this point and not have any hearing on those. Um, you can act on any admissions at this point and decide how we wanna proceed on the other ones, whether it's just call it a wash or proceed to a hearing. Okay, however, if we had questions re relative to the noise, 
are we allowed to ask those questions being there's a denial in place? Not at this so point. So that, that's the crux we're at, Melanie, on okay. that. We, we can't resolve that issue. Does somebody, okay, go ahead. Alderman Haas, go ahead. That. That's, oh, you did it? Okay. I didn't know. No. Okay, that's all right. Um, and that would be what I would like to see happen tonight, but I'm not going to force your hand or convince you one way or the other as far as the noise, unless we're willing to dismiss it and not be able to hear evidence to it. Okay. I don't think we collectively would just say we're going to dismiss it okay. based on, on, on just a few things that you said we may, um, it could be concisely dealt with okay. uh, at this time. And I, I would. Am I on now? Okay. That would be my suggestion. But like I said, I'm not trying to convince you one way or the other. I just would like to be able to uh, act upon it and, and let can, you run your business. Yeah, if we if we want to move forward, I'm, I'm completely against or I'm completely for whatever you suggest and whatever we need to do to be able to, I don't want to waste your time or waste my time either. Right, um, and, and my thought is, is okay, on the record, there's alleged six noise complaints. I think there's four. Oh, okay, yeah, four. There's Even with four. that being said, mm -hmm. it, it's on the record, police have you know, responded yeah. to it. You you admitted that in some instances you, you dealt with it. So that would just be my recommendation because we can, we can nip it in the bud. Yeah, that's fine. We can okay. go ahead and do that too. All right. With that being said, uh, is everyone in favor of moving forward uh, with any questions? Okay. All right. Um, Melanie, you admitted basically that there's been two occasions that uh, yep. a, uh, a bartender in your establishment has served underage. My question to you is this, is this the same bartender? It is not. It is not. No, it okay. is not the same bartender. Um, and they have all, I've went, we have signs posted now all over the bar, um, right at the front door. It says, have your ID ready, we ID. Um, take it as a compliment. All of my bartenders, I let them know like, hey, you know, you don't ID and you're fired. You know, mm -hmm. like there's no if, ands, or buts about it. I don't care if you're my daughter. I don't care if you're whatever. It cannot happen anymore because I can't risk my business. They have all signed new paperwork that where they're acknowledging it, they've dated it, they've done all of those things. I've expressed to all of my customers, I've posted it on Facebook, I've done those things where I've said, hey, you know what, we're not messing around. Like if you want to, um, if you don't have an ID, we can't serve you. And so it's obviously one time as bad, two, time as ho two times as horrible. Um, and we've cleaned up that bar and got the riffraff out and all of that stuff and made it a, a a neighborhood bar that people actually want to come to, and I'm not willing to risk what I've put into it when the neighborhood's put into it for somebody who's underage, so. Okay, uh, that sounds very reasonable to me that you made some concerted effort in action mm -hmm. on it. Uh, now, there were two violations, I think you mentioned fall was one. Yeah, it was. Um, Attorney Sirwin, do you have yeah, the, the dates? November 30th of yeah, last November, year. November 30th and then the second was, I'm sorry, November 30th and the second was in? June 18th. June, correct. Okay, so we almost have six and a half months between these violations, mm -hmm. okay. All right, uh, you pretty much covered a lot of the questions that I had uh, as far as how you handle the policy going forward, what you're doing to mitigate the issue going forward. Uh, does any of the other council members have any questions related to the underage serving? No? Okay. All right. With that being said, we'll move along to the noise complaints. And um, yeah. for Madam Chair. <coughs> Yeah, on the issue of the noise complaints, I think in reading the complaint itself, in, in each situation, uh, the bartender on duty or Ms. Kukas uh, acted very appropriately and and uh, turned down the, the volume whenever uh, there was a noise complaint. I, I don't see the noise complaints as being very significant. I, I would even suggest that we dismiss the noise complaints. Thank you, uh, Alderman Haas. And um, Alderman Haas stated it as I would. I, I agree. I understand that when you're in a, in a predominantly residential neighborhood, you could have one neighbor right. that, that it's very bothersome to. Somebody just might dislike karaoke that much. <laughs> you know, um, there's we a have diff somebody who's different level of appreciation for those sorts of events. However, um, it, 
it is something that we would expect that you address when you get a noise complaint. Right. Um, and the officers do. They show up if they can hear it. There's a certain distance. You're doing what you're supposed to do with decibel readings, um, and you're acknowledging it. So right. what I would suggest going forward is you try to mitigate it. Obviously, you know that these complaints are coming through, even we, if it's that one person. It makes it difficult. Cause we like, have, um, he's the karaoke the guy who runs our karaoke, he no longer brings his big subwoofers in. Okay. Um, so that's not, a, we def, we've taken steps to make sure that wasn't it. It's hard too when we have a bar that's directly across the street from us and a couple neighbors in the neighborhood who like to play music loud too, not taking it away from me, but is it me, is it them, is it us, is it all of that stuff? So we've worked really hard to make sure we have, I, we have people walking down the street with their phones out to recording to see how where you can hear things if you can hear we've really taken that into sounds like you took a lot of effort we had that happen yeah. uh, one of the nights with our council we went out to the parking lot because it could be a different song that's playing right or you know somebody's ripping yeah. <laughs> ripping the carry out yeah. yeah you know so, <laughs> it you is, but up, it's one of those and you things do you that... hear it differently based on uh, sometimes even the song so right. I commend you on making the efforts to address the problem and I'm sorry that you're dealing even if it is with one neighbor uh, we we can appreciate that so uh, at this time I do have one question for attorney Sirwin because we're hearing another uh, another um, complaint if we choose to go into closed session do, should we do this at one time or would it be uh, ill-advised that Ms. Kukas wait, and then we can just deliberate on both, or do we have to go in order? Completely your prerogative. You can deliberate in open session. You can deliberate in closed session. You could have the both happen at the same exact time. Um, in terms of when you go into closed session, it is completely up to you, um, as long as the record is clear when you're going into closed session and coming out of closed session. Okay. Um, for the sake of uh, time, I would recommend that we uh, go into closed session with both. Um, so if it's okay with the council, I mean the committee, and Ms. Kukas, if you mm -hmm. could have a seat, we'll proceed with our next sure. item. Yep. Okay? No All problem. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You, you okay. brought people with you. Were you intending for them? Okay, uh, item 4, 2024, 0538 summons and complaint against DTR Enterprises, LLC, doing business as Studs Pub, 6833 West National Avenue, Agent Dean Radis. Good evening, Dean. Good evening. Are we keeping you from golf? <laughs> there we go. No, everybody golfs over there. Uh, you heard the drill? Yes, I okay. certainly did. And uh, for uh, the record, uh, same thing uh, that Attorney Sirwin stated. Uh, we would like to know if you admit or deny the allegations of serving underage. Uh, I take full responsibility for uh, what happens on uh, at Studs Pub on uh, 69th and National. So uh, no, I uh, I admit uh, to everything and take responsibility for it. And uh, uh, I always say that uh, you know. The big guy up there, he didn't make any perfect individuals. We all make mistakes. One of the most important things in life is that you got to learn from your mistakes. And uh, that's what I've taken. Uh, I've taken steps forward to, uh, to do that. Um, I've been there 14 years now, never had a problem. And now I kind of let my uh, guard down a little bit. My, uh, my crowd there is, I, I got an older crowd, 30 to 90 years old. So I don't get too many young people in there. So. Uh, but when we do, we, uh, we forget, I guess, and uh, I mean, I'm embarrassed by it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get caught in 14 years, and now I got caught twice in the last, last November and now, now in June. So we will, uh, we will correct that problem. Um, and, um, you know, I've been, in the, I've been there 15 years. I've been in the liquor business for 48 years, so uh, maybe maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm getting too old now. To uh, <laughs> it might be my time to, to go, but uh, I'm not as sharp as I used to be. But we'll we'll correct the problem, though. There's no no uh, question about that. 
Okay, uh, with that said, can you give the uh, committee uh, an example as what you've done to correct it? Signage, you know, and, and told all my bartenders, you know. Okay. Um, I, I guess, you know, I, I kind of been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks. Maybe uh, 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 Pick and Save and Walgreens have something there where they card everybody that comes in. Uh, it, it really alleviates the problem. Um, so I, I've just alerted all my bartenders, even my kitchen staff, uh, that we have to uh, be careful and uh, be alert of uh, minors uh, coming in. And uh, just kind of put signs around the bar and uh, that's about what I've, I've done, you know. Um, so I, I will be more vigilant. And, and it's, I let my guard down. I, I, like I said, uh, I, I take full responsibility for what happens there. And uh, sometimes I get so involved with some of the things I do, um, I don't communicate as good as I, as I should. So I've learned from it and uh, we'll, we'll take a next positive step uh, forward. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, do any of the other committee members have any questions for, for Dean? Madam Chair, could I just do the same kind of question I did before? Yes, please. So, um, Dean, you had said basically the underage violations that were alleged are correct, so that was, um, I'm on the right, yeah, that yes. was incident from November 30th, 2023, which we've identified right. on the complaint as count two, and, and then count four is June 18th. Those are admissions. Those are admissions, okay. yes, definitely. There's then count one and count three, uh, which reference, uh, first one is an intoxicated male on July 22nd, uh, who was refusing to leave. It sounds like eventually he was- Well, I, you know, in, in that, uh, Nick, yeah. um, you know, I really think it was a late night customer that might've been walking in the area. Um, I'm there from 10 in the morning till six, seven, eight o'clock at night. I don't stay late anymore because it's, uh, you know, I, I, I go to bed at 9, 10 o'clock now. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to stay there late. But I think it was a customer that came off the street. Uh, I know my late night bartender, I know she wouldn't serve him if uh, he was really intoxicated or uh, obnoxious in any way. Um, and he came in, and, and that's another thing I've done too. Um, I put in some new hours, Sunday through Thursdays now. I close up between 11 and 12 o'clock. Um, and, and Friday and Saturdays, if we have a little extra business, we'll stay open probably till one, but I, I've, I've shortened my hours. Uh, nothing good happens after midnight anyway, so. Uh, and uh, that particular gentleman, um, my late night bartender, she doesn't put up with uh, any uh, bull. And uh, she just she called uh, she called the guys across the street she called the you know she called the boys in blue and uh, they came over and he was uh, he was a problem um on the other account um that's count one so count one is a denial or at least an explanation that obviously your bartender was the one that called the police yes okay yes and then count three was the other guy that was intoxicated the other guy yeah. um is a very good friend of mine He's just a, he's a wonderful man. Uh, I know the, I, I saw the initials and I know, I know who it was. Um, he's a wonderful man, hardworking man, um, just a super guy. And uh, along with that, you know, you get up in the morning, you look yourself in a mirror first before you judge anybody else. And, uh, we all have problems, whether they be marital problems, whether it be family problems, whatever. And um, I think this particular gentleman was just kind of relieving some uh, stress and pressure. And I, I really feel he just didn't want to go home. And it's our fault and, and everybody knows him. And uh, he was probably kind of happy to be there, but also some depression. And uh, we, we got him home. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But uh, I, take for, I take responsibility. And yeah, he, he uh, I guess he fell. And, uh, and his wife called. Uh, she's a little tough to deal with. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that, so. 
Um, but we're at fault. I, I admit the, uh, the error and the bad judgment, uh, should we say. Very good. So um, I, I'll take that as an admission to count two and four and three denying count one. Is that yeah. fair? Okay. On the, uh, you know, on, on, on the minor situation, uh, you know, serving the minors, uh, and not that this really makes any difference, uh, you know, I guess my fault, maybe I didn't uh, uh, communicate with her that well. It was a bartender. She's still with me. Um, all my help's been with me for about 10 to 15 years. Um, except for her, uh, she had just been with me for about a month or so and uh, she let her guard down and I didn't tell her, hey, look at, when in doubt, cart everybody. Um, the other one, which I was talking to Nick about before, a little bit today, uh, there again, totally my responsibility uh, or irresponsibility, um, which just happened in June, we got really busy. It was a Tuesday tacos and uh, uh, we had 20 to 25 people come in and, and walk in off the street for a birthday taco party that we, we didn't, was unannounced. And uh, so I only had one bartender and I was actually there. And uh, so I, there again, I take, full, I take full blame for that. I did talk to Officer Masadi uh, when he gave me the ticket and uh, we, had, we had discussed that. And sometimes it's hard to see a 20 year old and, and you really, and I'm not making excuses, you know, whether he's 6'2", 240 and a full beard, you know, I, he, that's where you get into the point of carding everybody, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, just uh, use good judgment, you know. So, like I said, I take responsible uh, responsibility for everything. Okay. Yeah. And that bartender is not with you anymore? From that second she's one? still with me. Oh, she is, okay, yes, the first she one is. she's not, okay. She's okay. actually a, a very good bartender and uh, yeah. So okay. I guess that's, that's it. I take, you know, Nick, I take full responsibility for it, so. Uh, do any of the committee members have any questions related to the other counts? Okay. All right. Um, at this time, I believe that uh, we would need a motion for consideration to go into uh, closed session. Madam Chair, before we go into closed session, because I'll have to leave for that portion, can I just make my piece real quick? Yes, please. Okay. Um, the only thing I would encourage the committee to do, and again, as the prosecutor, I want to make sure that these are bulletproof. That's maybe a bad term, but these are, these are, um, legally sound decisions, whatever is gonna happen, is to be consistent with past practice as best as we can. Um, in the past, with a recent one that we had, I'm just not gonna name names either, um, the, the committee held some time, um, and I know that's a theory of law that um, City Attorney Decker has. I can't say for certain, yay or nay, whether I ascribe to that belief or not, but I. I think consistency is important, um, and I believe that the licensees today spoke and kind of gave the committee what you would generally be looking for. I'm not asking to do anything beyond the normal or what we did previously. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, I'm gonna put on these glasses. Shouldn't have had these on. All right, so we're, if you'd like to have a seat, we're gonna Probably okay, go very into good. Closed session. Do we have a motion to go into closed Maybe session? Read it out. Read oh, okay. That's after I read it out. Okay. All right. For item, uh, for agenda items number three and four, the Public Safety Committee may convene in closed session pursuant to the provisions of Wisconsin Statute Section 1985-1A for the purpose of deliberating concerning a case which was subject of any judicial or quasi-judicial trial or hearing before the governmental body. The Public Safety Committee may reconvene in open session after completion of the closed the closed session to consider the balance of the agenda. Now do we have a motion? So moved. All right, is there second. a second? Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call vote. Roll call vote, thank you, thank you. Uh, Alderman Rote? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Haas? Aye. Alderman Halverson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. We're in closed session. 